Hello and welcome to this ALIMP Pro tutorial. My name is Brandon and today I'll be showing you how to create and manage your workspaces, projects, and libraries within ALIMP Pro. Now your workspace is pretty similar to most other workspaces when it comes to design software as it's going to be the directory or location on your computer where all of your projects will be stored. We can start off by checking out where to open and create workspaces. This can be done by going to the File tab on the ALIMP Pro toolbar and selecting the wanted action, like so. Or even easier, we can go to the flow manager and create our workspace from here. If you don't happen to see the flow manager, you can open it by going to view, linting windows, flow manager. From the flow manager, let's start off by making a new workspace. Clicking the create workspace button will put us into the create a uh, new workspace wizard. And from here, we can specify both the name and location of our new workspace, as well as a workspace flow. Additionally, we can decide here whether or not to generate an empty workspace. Selecting this option now allows us to finalize the wizard and complete our workspace. But uh, since a project list workspace doesn't help us much, however, let's go ahead and continue the wizard. Just like with the new workspace, you can specify the name and location of the new project in this window. By default, this name is the same as the workspace's name. So we'll go ahead and keep that and complete the wizard. And there you have it. Our new workspace and projects have now been created. Now from the project manager, we can see all of our projects associated with this current workspace. From here, we can also add more projects to the workspace either by right-clicking on the workspace and adding a new project, like so, or by using the Flow Manager. We can also add new files to a given project by right-clicking on a project and adding a file, like so. Now, a workspace often has multiple projects and files within it, and with that, each project can have different properties. To show this, we'll move on to a sample workspace. Let's first close our current workspace and then open the audio system workspace. We can immediately see this workspace has a number of different projects within it. When these projects were created, they inherited their settings from the global preferences. These preferences can be modified by going to tools, preferences. Now, normally having all your projects use the same settings isn't a bad thing, but let's say you want to parse a particular project using a different version of your HDL. You can change the setting for that particular project by right-clicking on that project within the project manager and selecting properties. This will bring up a new properties window, different from the global preferences we just saw. Next to each setting is a checkbox that signifies if we are using the global settings for that particular property. Unchecking that box and selecting the project specific settings we'd like uh, allows us to customize this particular project's settings without modifying the settings of the other projects within this or any other workspace. Now, having multiple projects within our workspace, we need a way to distinguish our active project. And this is done by having the active project bolded, as we can see here with the test project. When a project is active, the content of windows, such as the elaboration viewer or violation viewer, relate to that particular project. And this is because only the active project can hold a top level unit for elaboration and synthesis. It is only when we switch active projects will we get a new hierarchy. Now, this isn't to say active projects are completely isolated as active projects can instantiate from other projects and libraries. However, this might uh, require setting up dependencies between projects, which is done by simply right clicking on a project and selecting this option here to open the dependencies window. And one final note on active projects, the flow manager actions are only executed on that particular project. Uh, we can see this in action now by rerunning the linting phase on our current project. Because test is set to active, uh, this phase will only take effect on this project. Once finished, we can see the elaboration viewer and violation viewer both relate to the content of this project. By setting another project to active, via right-clicking on it and selecting the option like so, we can see that those two previous views now relate to the newly active project, and that the linting phase uh, that we just did was never executed on this project. 
Finally, let's now quickly go over libraries. We can see all the different libraries associated with this workspace by going to View, Design Management Windows, Library Viewer. In this window, we can see three types of libraries, Project, Attached, and Global. Project libraries are those automatically created with, par with parsed projects and share the same name of those given projects. They are local, meaning they are available to all projects within this workspace only. Our global libraries, on the other hand, are those that are available to all projects within all workspaces. Finally, attached libraries are those that you can add to a workspace manually. This is done by exporting libraries from other designs or workspaces and then attaching them here to the current workspace. When attaching, you can choose to make the attached library local, again, meaning local to the workspace, or global, meaning it'll be available to all workspaces once attached. And that'll actually be it for this introduction to workspaces, projects, and libraries within ALM Pro. I hope it was informative, and of course, thanks for watching.